Welcome to Bites of Light with Angel and Seth Brewer. Our mission is to bring bite-sized nuggets of information to be digested as you please. Take a quick bite or stay for the whole party. Pleasure being the main component of our mission, we will also bring other humans into our space to share their magical brew with us all. Love, service, and wisdom is what we are bringing to the table. Join us in our magical kitchen for what is being served is for your highest good. Hello and welcome to another episode of Bites of Light. We are uh, honored to have you here with us today. As always, I'm Seth. I'm Angel. And today we want to talk about subjugation. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the concept, you know, subjugation is just when when we are made to bend to the will of someone or something else, you know, that that takes us out of our our alignment, out of that thing that feels natural and feels most comfortable. When we say no and they insist that we change our no to a yes or vice versa. Um, but more than just subjugation of others, we see that all around us, right? People with power and authority in business or whatever it is will will try to bend you to their will, that subjugation. Your, your parents do it to a large degree as we're growing up. Our bosses do it in work environments. Um, the political authorities do it. So it's real easy as we look around us to see places, you know, it can happen in relationships, which is a big one. And I'm sure that's going to come up more today. Um, it can We can see it around us pretty clearly. But the place where we don't see it, where it hides from us, is in the words that we use to tell our own story. You know, I, I hear people say, I can't, I'm not able to fill in the blank. You, in those words, the individual, when you say those things, when we say, I can't, and we use these words, we are, we're writing a story of our own subjugation. We're now telling ourselves what's possible and not possible for us outside of the, the reality, the truth of the fact that anything is possible. If you can imagine it, it's possible for you. So yeah, just kind of diving into that, that subjugation piece today and, and exploring how we can break free from it, both around us and internally. Yeah, because within, we do have, you know, a cheerleader, and we have a tyrant, a subjugator. And at any time we can choose who we're going to listen to inside our heads. You know, the, 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 toy, the Toltecs call the voices in our head, the metote, it's like the marketplace. And there are many, many things that come draft in and out of our brains throughout the day. And where are you putting your intention? Where is that attention going? And if we choose to listen to the tyrant or the subjugators in our external worlds, what's happening is they're programming our inner tyrant. So even if we've had somebody say, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. Well, now you're internally telling yourself that you can't do it, even if they're no longer in your world anymore. And I've had this happen a lot. And so trying to unprogram the voices in your head that have programmed your own tyrant, that takes your awareness deeper into the process of what are you actually allowing into your world on a daily basis with all your external surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a big one that came up for me early in my childhood was that, well, you can't be so loud. You can't be so loud. You can't be so vocal. You can't be so just out there. Right. How many, you know, how many of you have heard those things? Don't be so much. And, and because of this, that, that piece of us that wants to belong, we go, oh, okay, I need to, I, I can't be that much. I can't be so vocal. I can't express myself is what it boils down to. You can't express yourself in the way that felt natural as, as a small child before these, these rules came into place. And so that was a big one for me was getting, working through that. Like I can, if I feel it, I can express it. 
And I don't necessarily feel and express the same way I did when I was four or five, but I am the, the work for me is to get back to where I do express it the same way I would have then, where when I feel it, just let it come out. If there's a song in your heart, just sing it, you know, that, that, and release that subjugation of, of that voice in your head. And I, and I describe the two as um, your, your brain produces thoughts from programming. You know, your brain is this wonderful supercomputer that absorbs all the things that are fed into it, whether you recognize it or not. And so when they subject, when you get these people that tell you these limiting beliefs, these sub, the subjugations, these, you know, these, you can't do this, you can't do that. You, you have to do this or you're a bad person. Those things get programmed in. And then that voice of the brain is saying, well, you can't do that. You were told you can't do that or else it will equal a, a being removed, being excluded, being excommunicated, being on your own. And the brain sees that as dangerous. You're no longer part of the group. You no longer belong. So there's this fear around it. So we subjugate us. So then we, our brain begins to subjugate us. And that to me is the tyrant. The tyrant really, right, it's, really resides in our brain. The, the cheerleader, that voice that says, you can do anything. You know, you have the right to, to express that song. Here's a song to express. That is, that is the heart. That is the truth of who we are. Trying to express that divine expression of, of our truth and, and our divine essence. So they're coming from different places. But when you're sitting there and you're, you're receiving these thoughts right? That's kind of like the, when, when these thoughts are telling you, no, you can't do this. No, you don't do that. Ask yourself, if I'm hearing the thought, where's the thought coming from? Who's subjugating me? Me or the idea of some ghost that no longer exists in my world? You know, or is somebody physically over you trying to get you to bend to their will? Like that's, but this voice that we hear in our head, if there's a voice running in our head, Who's listening? Who's speaking? And if you don't want to listen, stop listening. And if you want to hear a different voice, choose to make them different words, different thoughts. Because we are always at choice. When we come into the mastery of awareness, understanding and acknowledging what you are saying to yourself inside your head is a game changer. Mm. Witnessing the thoughts that are coming through and filtering through and, and, and maybe perhaps even putting new filters in. Oh, that doesn't, that thought doesn't serve me anymore. I, I'm not going to allow myself to go down that rabbit hole again. You know, we have, we have a choice as to what we're going to allow into our inner world as much as our external world. And, you know, Humans may feel that they don't have much control in the external realm, but you absolutely do have control of what happens within you, within your soul basket, within your mind. Mm -hmm. This is a place where you can experiment and play with boundaries, even within yourself. Oh no, sweetheart. No, we're not going to do that anymore. That that's no longer allowed in here. We're, we're changed. We've changed that program. Remember? And sometimes you have to remind yourself it, it is a spiritual muscle. We are practicing, we are experimenting and it takes energy and effort and time to reprogram yourself mm -hmm. because that's actually what has happened. We have been programmed. And once you understand that, you can then choose how you want to reprogram yourself. It's like changing your software in the computer. We all know that computers need upgrades. We have to maintain these systems. So why can't we take that analogy and maintain ourselves and upgrade your own software and put in new programming that will serve you better than the one that's running right now? Yeah. You know, and, and also before you go running off saying, oh, then I'm never going to let anybody suggest anything to me ever again because they're just trying to subjugate me. It's like, you know, su subjugation comes with the back end of judgment, right? I am going to treat you differently 
and see you differently if you don't do what I said. And we do it to ourselves. You know, oh, well, if I if I can't go do that, if I did that, you know, and, and then if if you do go do it, like there's this difference of, of how you would treat yourself, you know, and or just trying to keep yourself down, keep yourself from being that true, you know, that authentic expression of who you are. So just because somebody comes and says, hey, um, I would like you to do this. And I know you're not really that into it, but would you consider it? You know, that's not necessarily an attempt to subjugate. That's them wanting to also create their beautiful story. And you can choose in that moment with a, a look in, okay, does it feel like this would be hurtful to me? Or can I indulge this and, and be supportive of them without losing who I am? So yeah, not every time somebody comes and says, hey, here's, here's a, an idea you could consider. Is it a, an attempt to subjugate? Right. That can be that pendulum can swing way to the other side to where you're like, I'm not listening to anybody and anything ever again. And that's not necessarily the intent. Being open to receive is how we will get and how we do get the uh, the most beautiful messages and teachings and learnings that can open us up and set us free. And we cannot get a different result out of life without giving a different effort. So we will we'll go about our life and be like, well, I went to this retreat and then I came home and my life didn't change. It's like, okay, well, when they suggested new practices and new things, did you implement those? Well, no, but I went there and I felt different when I was there. So my life should change. It's like, there's the idea of sacrifice that there is an idea of sacrifice, but it's not sacrificing the truth of who you are and your heart. It's about sacrificing the beliefs that have kept you small, sacrificing these self-subjugations, sacrificing behaviors that have harmed you for, for years. What are you willing to give up if it means that ultimate, that ultimate love and peace and feeling of connection to the one mind and, and one consciousness. Is there anything you're not willing to give up to achieve that? Because those are areas that you're going to have to look into. Those are areas where you're limiting yourself, where you are subjugating yourself and keeping yourself from the greatest potential. You know, we do hook into things that don't serve us, that act as distractions. And so to maintain your own integrity within, understanding what your intent is, is a really good place to start. You know, because if you know what your intent is, when these people come to you with questions or ideas to collaborate or whatever, if you know what your intent is, then you have something to bounce it off to see whether you are in alignment with what story is being brought to you to be a part of. Because everybody's writing their own stories. Mm -hmm. But if you know what your intent is and what your mission is on this planet, when, when, when you go into spaces where people want to be in community or collaboration or even in relationship, whether it's private one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting, if you know what your intent is, it makes it very easy to decide whether this is something that will work for you or not. And if it is a no, then you also are at choice to say, do I step in and experience the mystery? to see or is it a hard no i'm walking away yeah yeah having a barometer something with which to measure it by like for me my my intention is to elevate my vibration as high as i can and shine my light for anybody and everybody that's ready to receive that to help them elevate their vibration so if i receive an opportunity to step onto a bigger stage and I go, oh, well, I can't do that. I'm not taught enough. I've not sat with enough 
teachers, I'm subjugating myself out of fear because that would totally be in alignment with my intention. So the fear is subjugating me, attempting to subjugate me and stepping through that. So it's like, okay, if I, I know that that's in alignment with what I am, am currently my intention is, so I choose to step through that fear. If I get an offer to, hey, here's here's a million dollars to never talk about any of this stuff ever again. And I go, oh, well, that there's some money, but, but that kind of feels gross. But am I willing to give myself? Am I willing to sacrifice that? I'm like, am I willing to go this way for some money? Well, that's not in alignment with the intention. And so having a barometer, and those are, of course, are fairly extreme examples, but having that barometer to bounce it off of is, you know, ends up being that true north, being that guide that you can kind of, as as we do this dance and we sway back and forth, am I starting to go off track? Oh, no. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit, because that's not really in line with my, the intention that I'm currently operating from. And knowing that that's also fluid. Checking back in with that. Is this intention still, does it still feel like my highest path, that that calling, that divine purpose. And it's okay to go, well, I think it's shifted. I think this is it. But making that a specific check-in, not when you're in the middle of a, you know, a tempting million dollar offer to shut down your whole operation and never share your light with anybody. Like that's not the time. Like that's temptation. That's, you know, something else could be guiding you to that. So having those check-ins be in your own quiet, your own time and then using that that barometer to to keep you on on that track on that divine path and the path is speeding up and you know time is relative it can be relative now when you do the multi-dimensional hopping and so you know this theory of new year's resolutions that programming does not necessarily serve humanity right now because we are all shifting so fast on this planet. It is, you need to be consistently checking in with yourself. Has my mission shifted? Has the intent shifted? You know, at least monthly, if not weekly, we do it daily. So where is your level of awareness to where you are and where you're going? And knowing that changes everything. Because if you're clear with your mission, and if you are clear with what your intent is, the universe can shake the puzzle and line you up and bring the people that you need and bring you the experiences that you need to have for this next level up. But you have to be committed to that. If there's any wishy-washy, then the universe doesn't know how to support you in that moment. Yeah. And surprise, surprise, I'm having an analogy pop in. <laughs> um, so when you're driving your car and you don't know where you're going, are you going hundred miles an hour, right? You, you, you're slowing way down. You're creeping along, trying to figure out what's what. And then once you know your direction, you know where you're headed, you can, you can hit that accelerator and you can, and, and the universe will kind of do that for you. And if you really dial that intention down, then it goes to that next step. And for anybody who's seen Star Trek or Star Wars, and you know the idea of you know jumping to, to light speed or going into a you know super speed. Zoomies. If you can, if you can dial that down and take that moment to bring everything in and calculate it in, then the universe can start quantum leaping you into it with purpose and direction. But without that, you know. If without that purpose and direction, if you just start going out, that 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 risk of of running aground, of hitting a, a a stray planet or star, is you know to, to further that analogy, is there. So really, setting that intention, it gives you that barometer, it gives you that direction, it gives you that ability to overcome and avoid those potential subjugations of others and yourself. A few years ago, my intention was, and, and still to some degree is, to follow my intuition no matter what. 
And that for those of you who have made that intention and committed to it, you know that sometimes that is not comfortable. Sometimes we cut unintentionally because people around us are not willing to go on that ride with us. We will cut large groups of people, people who have been closest to us, family, friends, significant others, will kind of be disappear from our lives when we commit to following that intuition no matter what, when we have that faith and we dive in. Because those people have unintentionally many times been subjugating you. They've been wanting to put you into their story the way they choose to see you. And when you start following your intuition and they say, no, I don't like that. I want you to be who and how you were before. And you say, no, that doesn't work for me anymore. They will, their idea, their projection of you is, is shattered and, and that no longer fits in their storyline. So that is something that's very real and possible when you choose to no longer be subjugated, to follow your intuition, to let your, your heart guide your divine path and, and shine that light there. I, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that doesn't come with sacrifice, but what you're sacrificing is all the things that have been holding you back. No matter how scary it feels in that moment, you know, oh, my best friend of 20 years may never talk to me again. If I don't, ugh, all of this stuff that was just, that was felt so true and, and allow myself to be subjugated back into her story or his story, that can feel scary. It can feel lonely. But oh. it opens the door. It opens the door for new because we know after tower moments, rebirth happens. And just because you choose to dive into another timeline does not mean the people surrounding you will come with you. And you have to be okay with that. You know, if you are aligned in your center and there is a knowing deep within your bones you stick the course, you stick the course and you know that on the other side, there will be other humans that will join you. Yeah, it, it is a leap of faith, right? I mean, religions have been talking about leaps of faith forever and generally using it as a manner, a means to subjugate you and their, their, their followers. But that faith comes in that knowing the universe will never lead you astray. When you can learn what your intuition, how to listen to your intuition. That is a guide. That is a barometer that will never lead you astray. And so powerful. And when you know to listen within and you trust your own channel, you trust your own guidance, then you are less likely to be subjugated. Because you know truth in your bones. You understand what your yes feels like. And you understand what your no feels like. And that would be where I would start. S start talking to your body and saying, show me what my yes feels like. Show me what my no feels like. So when these outside voices enter, you know how to discern. Are they speaking truth? Is that alignment for me or is it not? And not only from the external uh, sources, from within your own matote in your own brain. Are these voices speaking truth to you or are, is it time to eradicate them and put in new software? Mm -hmm. You know, and that the only thing I, I can tell you from my own experience of taking those leaps trusting that the universe is always showing up for us in the way that will support our highest growth and our elevation of our state of consciousness. The 
the other side of that that fear that might be there, that apprehension of letting go of what you've known. The other side of that is more amazing and beautiful than your mind can currently comprehend. That is in my experience. And I've heard that experience from many people on this path of self-discovery and, and recognizing that they have been suppressing who they were and their power and that journey back to the true essence of who we are. And we know people, humans, we're, we're here to experience life. And as we're experiencing life, we're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't come here perfect. This is part of the journey. We're here for education. And be careful with your subjugator inside your own brain that keeps hammering you down every time you make a mistake and pushes you down to the point where now you're being told within yourself that you're not worthy, that you don't deserve to go play in that ring, that you don't deserve to have love. That's where you really have to be careful. Do not subjugate yourself to the point of holding yourself back and punishing yourself for a mistake that you made. Yeah. And I would, I would make maybe one amendment to that. And only because of the agreements that have been made in our society around perfection. Like we are all perfect beings because we're here. That doesn't mean that every action or choice you make is going to serve your highest good because we get hooked by the folly of and distraction of the world around us, especially because when we come into this world, we're so, we're just so innocent and pure. And we trust these beings that brought us into this world implicitly. And they unload all of their garbage onto us unintentionally. But because you are here, you are a perfect being having this human experience. And the human experience is not easy. And the human experience can be <laughs> wrought with challenge. Right. And, and we have varying levels, right? We've, we've all experienced different levels of, of whatever those challenges look like. But know that you're perfect because you exist. Know that you deserve love because you exist. Know that you belong because you exist. You are not alone because you are connected to everyone and everything in the universe. That is the, the greatest lie that is propagated by those who would wish to hold you back is that you are separate and you are alone and you are small. And you are the only one experiencing things, experiencing these things inside your body right. where what we're finding is the more we talk about this, the more we're hearing me too. Right. Me too. Those, oh my goodness. Yeah. Those traumas that you experience in life, those situations that you get yourself into that, that harm you unintentionally. And then we feel all this guilt and shame because, well, I, well, if I hadn't been there, I wouldn't have had this negative outcome, right? I mean, rape's probably one of the most significant. If I hadn't been there, it wouldn't have happened. It's really my fault. Well, that's a load of bullshit. Like nobody should ever, like that is the most severe form of subjugation and harm mm -hmm. when you physically, emotionally, I mean, mentally, you're doing, you're hitting all of them. You are subjugating and harming that, that being. And so many people have experienced that, which I wouldn't wish on anybody, but you're not alone. No matter how severe you think in your mind, your experience of that trauma was, you're not alone. Other people have experienced it and they can hold that space for you and that compassion for you to be able to work through that, set it down and quit using it to subjugate yourself so that you can rise. So you can feel the connectedness that is there that you already have is just you're blocked off from it we do know that traumas in any form disconnect us from mama gaia and so that's the work is finding that reconnection within and that's the path that we have been walking and sharing this information 
comes from experience of learning it and putting language to it ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is our mission. Our, our mission is to help heal this planet. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I, uh, I don't take credit for a lot of the wisdom and, and information that flows from me. And you'll notice the word from me. Um, one of the greatest teachings that, that I've experienced in my life is in the Andean uh, medicine, which is the idea of love, service, and wisdom. First, we work on being unconditionally loving within. And then we have that unconditional love to share with everyone around us. And that is we are in service to that love. And as we step into that love space and be in service to that love, wisdom just drops in. It comes in from teachers. It comes in from experiences. And it comes in directly from source in the moments that are, that are there and needed. Because we are connected to that one consciousness. We all have access to all of this information when we remember. And that's really the act, right? That's what the Toltecs teach is that we're not here to learn. We're here to unlearn. We're here to remember what we knew at one point. We just need to unravel the conditioning that's been put upon us and remember who we are within and reconnect to our own channels, our own divine connection to source. Yeah. That's what we're here to do. Absolutely. So we wish you well on your journey. We would love to hear your stories. Absolutely. And your tools about how, what, what actions you're taking forward mm -hmm. to reconnect with yourself. Yeah. Drop comments below, follow us on social media, let us know. And we'd yeah. love to, uh, you know, answer any questions that you might have. So let us know if you have any questions around this or any of the other topics that we cover. Mm -hmm. all my love all right all my love thank you for sharing your time with us if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast please share it with others post about it on social media and leave a ratings and review hey did you know that both angel and seth have books coming out in 2023 stay tuned and follow us on all social media platforms at bites of light b-y-t-e-s-o-f L-I-G-H-T. Thanks again, and we look forward to sharing space with you again soon.